most reformers agree that the growing immigrant population is also creating social problems. Although there is wide disagreement on how to respond, there is pressure to close the nation's gates. From 1880 to 1910, something like 20 million people came. That was the time of the greatest immigration of Eastern European Jews, many of whom came from the Russian Empire. This was also the time of massive Italian immigration to the United States. The greatest impact, I think, that this immigration of the time had on American foreign policy was to create a movement for immigration restriction, which culminated after the First World War in the passage of these very restrictive quota laws. There were many tensions, much controversy about how these groups would be assimilated. Three major models of assimilation were formulated in this period of time. And the first was known as Anglo-Saxon conformity, also Anglo-Saxon supremacy. And the basis of this idea was the superiority of the Anglo-Saxon tradition, of the English language, of the values of the Protestant majority. It held that the immigrants and the cultures that they brought with them really didn't have anything new to add to what was already here. And it was the basis of much anti-immigrant sentiment as well. Now, the second, the most popular and enduring model of this process is what we call the melting pot theory. And this idea is that all different cultural groups would melt together and fuse to become an American character that was melted from all these different cultures. And then there was cultural pluralism, also articulated in the early part of the century. In cultural pluralism, each culture retains its own separate language and cuisine and music and literature and artifacts, and you proudly become what we call today a hyphenated American. 